Hi, this is Dr. Daniel Amen. And I'm Tana Amen. We're so excited you're with us. For this week's series, what we're doing is we're playing the live class from the mm -hmm. end of mental illness. We wanted you to join us on this journey because we had such a good time in our class and the people who joined us had just saw such incredible transformation that we wanted to share the challenge with our tribe. So we wanted to share this with you and we hope that you will join us in the challenge. Doc said I was low in vitamin D and need more sunshine. I told Doc, I've been looking for Mr. Sunshine all my <laughs> life. <laughs> That's funny. You're more likely to find Mr. Sunshine if your vitamin D level is That's right funny. and you're happier. Are cheap nutraceuticals better than nothing? Um, well, it depends on the quality mm -hmm. of the nutraceuticals. But I don't know if you know, and I haven't talked probably enough about if you pre-order The End of Mental Illness, go to endofmentalillness.com. Um, you get a 50% off coupon for BrainMD supplements mm -hmm. for your first order. So order a lot, but use that coupon. Mm -hmm. So if you pre-order the book, which is, I don't know, $23, and you buy $100 of supplements, they'll actually take $50 mm -hmm. off that order. So we really want you to pre-order the book. It'll help uh, um, get the book some momentum, which we're really hoping to do. Um, we have just lost a family member and are going through mm. lots of stress. Is there one thing in particular to help our brains at this time? Starting the whole program seems overwhelming. Yeah, I would do one thing right too. Now. The one thing, work on your sleep. Yeah. Sleep is Agreed. so important because if you can calm down your nervous system and on BrainMD, we have a brand new sleep product. We haven't even formally launched it, but you can find it on BrainMD called Put Me to Sleep. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think one thing is better. And for some people, it's like, but I can't sleep or whatever. It's like pick the one thing you can do. If it's if it's meditating for five minutes and then working your way up and then working into sleep or if but sleep has got to be the thing that you ultimately get to that's going to help reset everything else. Right. And that one habit um, is this good for my mm -hmm. brain or bad for it? Just ask yourself, is this good for my brain or bad for it? And I have. Um, just this great, very sad story of Chris, who mm. I was doing a lecture and all of a sudden it was in Northern California. She comes up to me and she starts crying. And, you know, this happens to me a lot. And so I just waited. And when she stopped crying, she said, um, two years ago, my 12 year old daughter, Sammy died of bone mm. cancer. It Cannot just imagine. Heartbreaking. And um, and she said when she died, part of me was glad because she was out of pain. Mm. Bone cancer is just loaded with pain. And but I didn't know how bad it would hit me. And I went to bed, drank alcohol, ate bad food and ballooned up to over 200 pounds on her five foot two frame. And on the two year anniversary of Sammy's death, she'd planned to kill herself. And then um, she saw me on public television and um, it's my book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Body. And she said, well, I'm going to go get that book. And if it's a bad book, I'll kill myself tomorrow, <laughs> which is what she said to me. And I'm like horrified. You know, I'm just up in my office in my little chair writing and I'm like, well, it really matters for some people. Don't make it a bad book. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she said, but it was so simple, so easy that I just stopped drinking and I stopped eating bad food and I started walking and then I started running and it's 10 but weeks later. But notice she did one thing at a time. She did one thing at a time. And then uh, when I saw her, it was 10 weeks later. She'd been down 24 pounds. Over the years, she lost 35 pounds. And she said, I want you to tell the people you talk to, never let grief be your excuse to hurt yourself. And, and I got to tell you, that's powerful because I cannot imagine 
losing a child and and being able to like think that way like I, i'm just being honest i mean that's really hard and we teach this stuff but that's like the one thing that i think has got to be just so hard so challenging so painful so to the people that one thing at a time yeah sleep would be the first thing i would think of yep I was wondering if you've seen any medical studies about prayer and reducing mm. stress or having mm -hmm. positive effects on the brain. Well, come to think of it, last year we did a study on prayer. We studied the brains with both quantitative EEG, looking at the electrical activity of the brain, and then with SPECT. And we looked at conversational prayer, I pray for you, versus speaking in tongues. That was fascinating prophecy, uh, discernment, and uh, it was so interesting. Was it similar and to meditation? It was similar to meditation. The emotional part of the brain calmed down. It makes sense to me. And the thoughtful brain went up with conversational mm -hmm. prayer. But speaking in tongues, which people know from the book of Acts in the New Testament, um, it's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's where you're actually channeling the Holy Spirit. Now, I know some people watching are like, what is this? And in um, evangelical or charismatic traditions, um, it's not uncommon. And so this channeling, um, what happened is the front part of the brain dropped in activity, which is what happens when other researchers have studied channelers mm. and but in a so, couple so from of people a brain perspective it's a similar function as channel right okay and but the pleasure centers in a couple of our people went up just like they got a hit of cocaine oh interesting it was really interesting so because for me i know when i'm when i meditate i pray and i meditate at the same time for me they're very much connected so i was just wondering if they're effect on the brain was similar. So what are other exercises you would recommend in place of walking like you're late for 45 minutes in inclement weather? What about an elliptical? I like the elliptical trainer because it doesn't hurt my knee. Um, so the elliptical trainer works for me. I have a walking treadmill that I can answer email on. I love. Um, so it's not an intense treadmill. Uh, I don't like to run on the treadmill because of my joints, um, but my um, walking treadmill. So I'm not sitting. So if I'm writing or I'm doing email, I can just get up and move for an hour. I don't have to go to fast pace, but it's really great. Um, you can go to the mall and walk. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so many things you can do. So there's an interesting comment. I knew the prayer would get some comments. 100% sugar pill. If you believe it, it will yep. work. Um, belief is so powerful. It's so true that but same um, with meditation it's like it's got to be the thing you put your mind into but but a sugar pill doesn't mean there's nothing to it no it's that belief can literally transform yep. your body with the faith of a mustard seed where <laughs> you bring your attention determines how you feel and when i was a young medical student i saw a patient who had something called pseudosiesis. Do you know what pseudosiesis you is? You told me about this. It's about false pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It's when a woman believes yeah, I remember, I remember she's pregnant, school, yeah. even though she's not pregnant. Her body actually begins to take yeah. on the shape of a pregnant woman. She loses her periods, her breasts get larger. Yeah. She can even um, start lactating because belief is so powerful. Where you bring your attention, Determines how you feel. With the faith um, of the mustard seed. What are your thoughts regarding the saliva test to determine food sensitivities? Mm. Um, you know, I think the food sensitivity test can be helpful. I think a more helpful way to do it, a cheaper way to do it, is do an elimination yep. diet. Is eliminate anything that you might be sensitive to and then add them back one by one. Is eating healthy fats okay even if you're trying to lose weight? Yes. Almost especially if you're trying to lose weight. Because it helps decrease your, your it's It increases sat your satiety centers. It helps with the... But we're so, not talking cupcakes. No, no. It has to be healthy fat. <laughs> so she said healthy fat. So, um, But small amounts of healthy fat and protein together throughout the day taken like medicine. So like medicinal type doses. You would never eat like large amounts all at once with medicine, right? So think of it like that. It increases your satiety so you feel more satisfied. Increases your energy... 
and decreases your cravings. It balances blood sugar, balances the hormones of metabolism. So absolutely what you want to cut back on are simple carbs completely. You want to increase fiber, but not simple carbs. So low glycemic, high fiber. Um. When it comes to sleep patterns, is there documented research regarding night shift workers? In other words, is this harmful to people's health? Absolutely. I'm a night owl and often get eight hours of sleep, but I get them at weird, weird times, 3.30 a.m. to 10.30 um, a.m. Um, so it's the quantity, not necessarily the time, of sleep. Shift work absolutely does hurt people. So knowing how to manage that, I think if you go back to, I think it's lesson three, um, where I talk about sleep in great detail, um, I actually talk about shift work. There. But isn't there some, isn't there some research that says your circadian rhythm, it's not just about the amount of sleep, it's the circadian rhythm. So if you are a shift worker, trying to stay on a more regular schedule because some shift workers will go back and forth. It's like, oh, I'm going to sleep at night, then I'm going to sleep into the day. That will mess up your circadian rhythm, which can then cause problems. And the bright light therapy lamp can actually help yeah. reset your circadian rhythm. Do CT MRI scans necessarily show brain damage after a serious fall? The answer is no, nope. they don't. Uh, often they don't. I know a child that fell down concrete stairs at age one, doctor's monitor for a couple of years, said she was fine. But a few years later, she was diagnosed with ADHD and learning problems. Single so most common. important thing I've learned from 160,000 scans, mild traumatic brain injury like this one ruins people's lives. And nobody knows it because they do structural scans, not functional scans. So MRI and CT, typically they're looking at the structure of the brain, which could be fine. But the function of the brain is not. Right. Um, I've attempted to eliminate things from my diet. In the past, I've suffered from FOMO, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. How can I control my cravings and feel I'm not depriving myself of something pleasurable? Well, that's the big lie mm -hmm. is that Drew Carey said it best. Eating crappy food isn't a reward. Right. It's a punishment. And so until you get your mindset right, that what you're craving is a weapon of mass destruction, it's going to be hard. So I actually have a lot of tips on this, the cookbook, um, in the Brain Warriors Way cookbook. And my when Chloe was in seventh grade, she actually has the classic example of this. So she came home and she's like, I she would never talk to us about eating healthy because she was so afraid that it was going to make her the weird kid at school, right? She was so afraid that she was like going to miss out, just like you're talking about. She didn't want to show up somewhere, be the weird kid, but she started to get really anxious. She started to notice that her moods were not right. Her skin was breaking out. She started to gain a little bit of weight and she's like, I want to eat healthy, but I don't want to be the weird kid. And if I go to a pizza place with all my friends, what am I going to do? So we talked about it. We came up with strategies, the same strategies that are in the cookbook, same strategies that are on my website. And so she came up with a strategy and I love it. She went out with her friends a couple of times. She came home. She goes, this isn't hard. She goes, this is so much easier than I thought. They don't even really notice. They order pizza and Coke and I go get a salad and tea and no one really pays attention. So she's like, I thought it was going to be such a big deal, but it's not. She's like, as long as I have a strategy ahead of time, it's not hard. She just thinks ahead of time. What am I going to go get? She does it. She follows through and then it's not hard. All right. We're almost out of time. And we are so grateful for all of you that are watching. Um, you know, over the week, we have thousands, almost 7,000 people are staying with us. We're yeah. really grateful for you. So day one of your task this week is learn to kill the ants. Do the five questions with five thoughts. Um, and we have a handout for you on that to start each day with today is going to be a great day and end each day with what went well today. And these are things you should just do ongoing. Three, gratitude, appreciation journal, three gratitudes and three appreciations. Appreciation is gratitude squared where you feel grateful and then you share it. I am grateful for you. I appreciate you every day. Me too. Um, we have a hypnosis audio download for you that comes from brain fit life um i think you'll like it i actually developed this for tana when she took her black yep. belt test um 
there's a great comedy routine just to begin to train your brain to be happier. Um, it's called The Tale of Two Brains by Mark Grunger. It's hysterical. Is that the one with the male female brain? Oh, my God. It's so funny. So um, funny. Day six, write down five of your happiest experiences and relive them in your mind. We have an exercise for you. And day seven, use your memory to feel great anytime, anywhere. It's an exercise I developed in my book, Memory Rescue. I think you will like it a lot. What we want from you is stories mm -hmm. of change. Both Tan and I live for the stories you tell us of how this information has helped you. It's okay to tell us about struggles, but we want to hear about the process. We want to hear what you're doing. So, yeah. Great. Stay with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 978-1363.